collective singing in the integration process of young migrants. It's actually not an initiative of the European Car Association by itself, or let's say uh, of the association as a network of lots of organizations, professionals, and people coming together to try to um, further the questions around collective singing in Europe. And this idea of uh, seeing how collective singing can be useful uh, in the integration of young migrants was floating in the air for quite a long time. And we finally set up a, a project about that with 10 other organizations from Estonia to uh, Lebanon and Finland, Germany. A lot of countries were involved, a lot of people were involved. Uh, and we use this broad network to find, locate, and collect uh, best practices all across Europe to try to understand what we can learn, what we can share, and what you can use for your own projects in terms of integration through singing. It was a basic idea. We were supported by the European Union through the Erasmus Plus project. It was a big help, and we worked quite hard for two years on this project. Um, and now we are trying to have as many people using these uh, handbooks um, in the coming years. That was our own motivation, let's say, from the professional perspective inside the network. But we also had statistical evidence that actually we were not alone thinking and trying to find solutions to these questions. In 2013, we started a project called Singing Europe, which was a statistical collection of information about choral singing in Europe. And in the framework of this research, we have asked to about 5,000 choirs a set of questions. One of the questions was actually, why are you singing together? Why are you coming together once a week to rehearse some perform concerts? And they had to choose between different items. Of course, they want to produce concerts to uh, work towards good quality music and so on. But one of the items was, we want to contribute to social integration of singers of different generation or cultural background. About 65% of the choirs answered that this was the case. And so we said, hmm, there is something there. And actually, out of these 65%, about 25% of the choirs were not fully satisfied with the way they were reaching this aim. Then if you uh, compare that with the number of choir we estimate to be active on the European scene, that would mean that about uh, a fourth of a million choirs would be in need of some kind of support. May, maybe they're not all interested in uh, integration of migrants. Some of them are interested in uh, um, senior citizens, for example. But still, we know there is a question there. And we have had in the last few months more than 6,000 uh, downloads of the handbook. So it's also a sign that actually we reached an interesting question. OK. For whom are we developing this project? Have we, have, why and for whom have we been working on this topic? Of course, at the end of the day, the idea is to serve people in migration situations, first, second, third generation sometimes, so young people located in different European countries that may have the need to have a better connection with the rest of society. But they won't be asked to read these handbooks. They actually have to benefit from projects that you might be setting up. So you, people watching this uh, webinar, are most likely our direct target. And what I mean there, you are most likely professionals in the youth fields, conductors of choirs, maybe school teachers, and so on, music teachers, in any way involved in this question, in this topic of trying to use collective singing to uh, get people to better live together. So that's, that's a very important point for us. Then, of course, we reach you and other people uh, interested in this topic. We are um, mobilizing our network, different type of organizations, the media, and so on, to try to spread this information so that it might be useful. That's uh, the idea. I've been talking about the process, but what have we been actually doing uh, along the three years? As I've said, we collected uh, existing best practices in the field, in all these countries, and actually beyond Europe, try to analyze what was interesting, what we could learn from that, and try to um, make a condensate of the important information, of the challenges and the solutions, tips and tricks that can be used to go forward in any of these projects. And at the end of the day, we created 
three main uh, handbooks. We call them handbooks, guides, however you want to call them. Little booklets that are translated in 11 languages, so you can read them in your own language. Um, and they are dealing with three different types of situations. One is singing with groups of young refugees, where you might be dealing with a unified group of people uh, with a, in a refugee situation. The second one we'll be talking about today is about including young people with migration background in existing choirs. You have a choir in your school, in your city, in your village, and you want, you have the need, uh, in any situation where you want to get people who might have some differences and how, how to do that, how to get the people to do things together. And finally, the last one was about working in a school environment, might be in school or after school. Three guides in 11 languages, plus an additional tool, which is the repertoire guide, a tool where you can find a lot of music and ideas on how to use it. I will talk about that later, and we'll also talk about it during the presentation. So that was in a few words uh, the idea, but maybe before we start, I've told you that we would ask you some questions. And before I give the floor to Sonia Greiner, I will, we will ask you a question about these handbooks, because if you are here, maybe you have already read the handbooks. And I will ask you to answer a small question about them. So have you downloaded and read one or more of these handbooks? Maybe you just downloaded them, but you had no time to read them. And I would really invite you to do it uh, after this webinar and just not downloaded them at all. So please answer that and let us know what it is. And in the meantime, I will give the floor or the camera, technically speaking, to Sonia, and I'll see you in a few minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Cole. Um, so let's see who is already familiar with the handbooks and who has um, at least seen them or has read maybe one or two of them. And um, again, just to say, if you come up with a question or a comment, uh, use the chat function in between. Um, and if you miss something at the beginning, you can still watch the beginning of the recording later. So you um, will be able to catch up. Um, we're waiting for some more people to answer. Um, I have about half of the people, so maybe we will show you um, the results. And after the poll, I will start talking a little bit more about the actual handbook. So now you can see the results. Um, that's interesting. So nobody has not downloaded the books yet. So the people watching this webinar are aware of the handbooks, or at least the ones who have answered the poll and have um, downloaded them at least, or in part also read them. So let's... Um, go um, to more details on this um, handbook too. So for the ones who were not there at the beginning, this is the handbook we are talking about. Um, so it's about people who would like to either increase the number of people with migrant background in their normal choirs, or people who want to create maybe a choir that brings to better singers from different cultures and different backgrounds. I will switch to the presentation. Um, so here we are, um, and then the first question is why did we do this specific um, handbook? Because as you heard from Kohn, there were uh, different handbooks that we developed and we decided that maybe the um, circumstances of what, what you do or how you have to work are different if you're working in a school or if you have a choir already. One of the triggers for this specific book was actually um, a book that was published by the German association AMJ, Arbeitskreis Musik in der Jugend, because they made a research on how big is the percentage of migrants in youth choirs in Germany. And they found out that the percentage was much, much lower than uh, the percentage in the population. So that obviously the choirs were not uh, including as many migrants as they were living around them in certain parts of the city, um, etc. Um, also, we realize that recruiting singers is different if you are working with an existing choir than if you want to work with refugees. You can go to a refugee accommodation. If you're working in school, you have the kids or the people there. 
Finally, also the choice of repertoire may be different because if you already have a choir and you're looking for new singers, maybe um, you don't want to completely radically change your repertoire, so the questions are different. And maybe your choir will have to change in a way if it wants to open up for new migrants. So the situation can look a bit different. Um, then I would like to say also that when we wrote the handbook, we came across a number of questions. We saw that it was not so easy to say, okay, now we're going to write the tips for you on how to do it correctly, and this is the way. So um, we came across many challenges that were raised during meetings as well. I said, oh, we are describing issues, but these issues are not specific only to young migrants. You may have exactly the same situation, the same challenge, if you're working with socially disadvantaged young people who don't have a migrant background. Um, we also um, realized that there are actually quite a lot of choirs who said, yes, we have singers with migrant background, but it's not a topic for us. It's normal. It's part of our daily life. These people don't need our handbook. We are very happy that these choirs exist, and the conductors of these choirs probably won't need to look into this handbook. And then the third challenge or difficulty we found was when you are describing certain challenges connected to cultural differences, you are walking on a very thin line and you're always in danger of saying something that looks like a prejudice or a cliche. Um, and uh, you don't want to do that, but in a way it's very difficult to avoid that because if you want to say, you know, if you have Muslim singers, this is what may happen, you have to generalize a little bit. Um, but we made sure in the handbook always to say this is a possibility, this doesn't have to be like that, and I will come back to that. And um, last but not least, um, actually identifying the migrants as a separate group can be a difficulty. So we always said our final aim is that you won't have to speak about it. At the beginning, you may have to think about it, speak with your singers, speak with the new singers, but the final aim is that you become a choir of the middle category on this slide and you say, we have migrant singers, but we don't need to talk about it. So Gorm already told you a little bit about the process. We collected over six months more than 100 examples from the different categories and we tried to um, draw out the tips and tricks and we also made interviews with some people and asked them what worked well and what didn't work well in their specific project. And we also collected a number of videos and descriptions and I chose one choir which I liked because it turned around the description of what they're doing. In most cases we had German choirs or English or French or um, Italian choirs or whatever that would say we see it as our role to integrate or include um, migrants in our country. And then there was a choir in Berlin, the Hoffnungschor Berlin, that turned the question around and they said we are a Syrian choir that is happy to integrate German singers in Germany. And I like this change of perspective which also shows sometimes we have to go a step back and think about how are we formulating certain things. We also came across um, a project I like in Greece um, because the children in the film this project made are actually the best ones to describe what it means if you are singing in a choir that includes young people with migrant background. So we would like to share this film with you a little bit now. It's a shortened version, so if you like it, you can also later watch the full version, but this is slightly shortened. <laughs> Πέφτει το δεξί μου χέρι, πέφτει και το αριστερό και πέφτω πίσω. Για μένα η πολυφόνικα στη ζωή μου είναι πάρα πολύ σημαντική. Ε, άλλαξα χαρακτήρα που ποτέ τη γνώρισα. <Κι> Αισθανόμαστε μια οικογένεια, ενωμένη. Δεν νιώθουμε κάτι διαφορετικό ανάμεσα μας. Ποιος είναι καλύτερος, ποιος είναι χειρότερος. Νιώθω ότι είμαι με άνθρωπους λιγάκι σαν και εμένα. Ένα και! Αυτό που είναι το δυνατό μας σημείο είναι ο διαπολιτισμικός χαρακτήρας της Πολυφόνικα. Ξεκινήσαμε με μια ομάδα 15 παιδιών και τώρα έχουμε φτάσει τα 120 περίπου. 
τα οποία προέρχονται από 20-22 διαφορετικές χώρες. Εγώ είμαι από την Πολωνία και εγώ είμαι από τη Ρουμανία. Είμαι από την Ουκρανία, από τη Ρωσία, έχω λιγάκι από τη Μολδαβία και Κύπρο. Είμαι από τη Ρουμανία και γεννήθηκα στην Ελλάδα. Είμαι από Ιγυρία. Είμαι μισός Λιθανός, μισός Τούρκο. Είμαι από την Πολωνία, ε, από τον Κνιέσμο. Εγώ είμαι από τη Ρωσία. Με λένε το Μινίκ, είμαι δέκα χρονών και είμαι από την Κάνα. Στη χωροδία δεν παίζει ρόλο καθόλου η θρησκεία, τι χρώμα δέρματος, ματιών, πώς μιλάει ο άλλος, τι πρόβλημα έχει. Όλα είναι σαν όλοι να είμαστε σαν στην ίδια χώρα, στην δικιά μας χώρα, στη μουσική χώρα. So, that was the film. Um, what I also like about this film is that um, you see that the question, what are the big migrant groups, may be quite different in the different countries. And that was something we found out quite soon when we were thinking about repertoire, that it's not always the Arab countries or Africa or what we're thinking about, but it may be a variety of nationalities that we don't see as migrant groups normally when we think about it. And then um, one last thing about the process. I think it's important to know that not all the projects we collected can be considered as successful projects. But as often in life, you learn sometimes more about projects that fail because that helps you find out the weaknesses. So we were also very happy for the tips and tricks that came out of failures and talked about pitfalls to avoid when you have such a project. But now let's switch to the contents. What actually will you find in this handbook? And for the first chapter, I will pass the word to uh, my colleague Marina Velasquez from uh, Movimento Coral Catalá, who were um, partners in the project, and Marina uh, worked a lot on this handbook. So please, Marina, take over from here. Hello, my name is Marina Velasquez. I am the manager of Movimento Coral Catalá. Uh, and I'm going to speak to you about the challenge, tips and tricks uh, of uh, including migrant people in uh, existing, <coughs> sorry, existing choirs. Uh, I'm going to start uh, uh, with, uh, we are going to focus in language, religious, gender issues, economic differences, recruitment strategies, Welcome mechanism and legal uses. We are going to start with the language. Uh, language uh, can affect in the in the choir who is uh, including migrant uh, people. It can affect in different ways depending if they are the first, second, or third generation. Sometimes uh, we find that the people when the singers come from they are from second or third generation. They speak very well the local uh, language, but maybe the, the parents even, they, they don't know how to do it. Or we, we have the, in the just arriving people who doesn't know the, the, the language, the local language, uh, they, don't, they cannot speak English, French, or, or uh, Spanish or the language of the country, the host country. So uh, maybe it, it could be a, a way to, the singing will be the way to, for, for learning, for teaching the, the language. So it could be also, you have to also to have in mind this, this factor at the time to choose the repertoire. Um, we are going to give you some tips and trips and for for this for the first uh, they have to understand what they are going to sing so maybe you have to start uh, wor uh, working the songs with uh, without words uh, with uh, imitation body percussion uh, maybe uh, you you have to to make uh, uh, games with uh, with names uh, you have to facilitate the the way 
uh, for for learning the the songs. Sometimes you can use also some illustrations like this to show what you are going to sing. And um, uh, maybe you can ask them to 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 show you a song of the country so they can teach to the to the other uh, boys what they are uh, the the meaning the how to pronounce the, the songs uh, they can uh, sing a song for the companions of the choir for the colleagues or also, uh, you have uh, you, you should uh, rehearse a song that nobody knows the meaning and the language, so they can very, feel very comfortable. The, the most important of of all what we are going to explain today is that the people uh, we have to welcome the migrant and to feel uh, to make them feel comfortable in the choirs. So everything you have to do is to facilitate the the way to to be with us uh, no. you have to they have to understand what they are singing so they have you have to facilitate it but you also uh, have to they they have to understand what you want to say so if you are a conductor maybe you have to use more gestures and less words and uh, maybe you uh, you have to flex flex uh, to be flexible with the way of working. Marina, and, uh, Marina, yes. Sorry, we just have a question in the chat. Can you show once again the paper you just held up with the illustration yes, of the song? Yes. It is an illustration. Some some draws we have done for they to understand the words. Maybe they cannot remember the. The, the words so you you can show the the drops so they can if you don't want to use the words maybe you can use the the drops thank you to show them sorry haven't seen the the chat uh, another thing you have to 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 do is to to look in the choir for a good father, a parent or a good father good father or good mother uh, like an eldest uh, brother to be with the new singer, the new arrival, to translate and to be with him better if, the, if this one is a, a migrant uh, from uh, you, you have yet in the, in the choir, and to be his or her confident during the, his stay here and to translate you to, to them. But also you can make this kind of a scene I have showed you, but also you can look in the, there is some dictionaries uh, you can use and some, you can have some information in the, in the internet to, to communicate what you want to say to, to them. And also you have to have communication with the parents. Sometimes they don't speak properly, be very patient because sometimes they want to speak in, in your local language and they have difficulties because sometimes they don't know for, for them it's not easy to do that. You have to be very sensitive and very, very patient with parents because parents are part important of the of this kind of choirs. Uh, now we are going to focus on religious, uh, religious uh, understanding. Uh, what happened in the different cultures will be very, very good for local choir, but and, and for the the new welcome people. Uh, but this is opportunity to know about the the way they live they live in 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 other countries. So it's a very good uh, occasion to explain the choir before arriving or before do that to explain which will be the difference. Uh, to avoid mid and, mm, misunderstanding and to avoid conflict. So it's, it's good if you spend a, a time to explain to the choir what, what is going to, to happen. Uh, now, when you have the, the, the migrants in your choir, it's important that they feel that the, that the choir is belong to them also. So if you are going to put some new rules, they have to accept. It's easier if they can participate in the construction of the rules. So you make this, uh, this rule, are their rule, not the conductor rules. 
uh, you have to explain the, the different habits. Uh, sometimes uh, you have uh, different, very different uh, ways of, of doing. Um, sometimes they are not used to be so many punctual with the punctuality to for starting the the, the rehearsal so you have uh, the the to to be very very soft with with every everything with with all of this you have to to explain because you can you can find that the parents don't want that the the children come to the choirs uh, they don't want they travel with the with the choir, uh, or you have to do it is to to make that they feel comfortable. The families and the children feel comfortable in the choir. Explain, uh, try to know what are the, what are they afraid of, and explain all the how the choirs go for them to know that there is not a dangerous uh, place. It's, not, it's a very safety place, not only about the security, of course, but also about the religion. They are not going to do anything bad. They are not going to sing anything bad against the religion or their culture. Even about the uniform, try to be flexible and to include uh, that they can, if they have to use the, the handkerchief, they, they, they also could do it. And try to to verbalize this, of course, with your choir to avoid uh, a conflict. This is a very important. And maybe you can include the, the way of the dress in your dress code for, for the choir. <clears throat> Be careful with the pers uh, with the use of the percussion, the corporal percussion, or the choreographies, where sometimes girls and they, they have to touch each other so much because some cultures don't, don't, doesn't accept that. And uh, if they are afraid to <clears throat> that the children come alone, look for the way they, you, you can go with, with him or someone can go with him to back to home. And also important thing about the, the food they, they, they have. Sometimes they, they have a for, uh, forbidden food, so you have to be sure that the parents know that this is a very, very safe place in all of aspects. Also, um, there is a different, could be a, <clears throat> a different about music bra uh, sorry, background. Uh, they have different in, people from the East, uh, in the East country, East country, they have a different scales, they have different, um, Temperaments and rhythm, but even they have a different way of, of rhythm, not only music. The, the Latin characters are not used, using there. So you have to be very patient and you have to, be, to explain then uh, that singing is not a bad thing. Also, you can put the examples. Some, some people, the Muslim, uh, when they use the singing for calling for prayer, um, they sometimes they don't know the notations, so you have to be very patient again and look for other uh, ways to show the the music. Uh, you have in definitely you have to adapt your methodology to work uh, with them and to make them comfortable, which is the most important if you have to you want to be successful with your experience. There is also the gender issues, uh, depending on the country and the culture where they, they are coming. Sometimes they, they, uh, they have very different, very, good, very well differentiation about gender. So male and female sometimes are working separately. So you, they have to be used to, to work together. So maybe it's easier if you, go, you do it uh, few by few. Uh, you can start. Uh, you, you can have uh, two conductors, male and female, at the beginning, and to interchanging. And you can also make a mixed choir, but sometimes only sing with uh, two sessions, separately session, for them to be used to few by few to that. 
be careful again with the choreographies and the with movements, but also with the touch each other. And if you are anything you are going to to do, please verbalize it and explain very well to them to know that they are not doing bad things that could be uh, going conflict with with their way of life. About the economic differences, we have, of course, different kind of migrants. Sometimes the the migrants are very their economic his economic their economic situation are better than our. It's not the 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 most of the, of the cases. They they are in in loud uh, louder economic situation. So uh, in the choir, sometimes in the choir, most of the choirs in Europe, you have to pay a fee for, for being part of the choir. If you are going to include migrant people, maybe you have to change a little bit your mind in that, in that aspect and be flexible, but it's the same with other aspects. You have to look for a way they can participate and they don't feel bad about, about this. Um, they can contribute uh, doing another things. Maybe you have to look for ways for contribution. They can do any any work of the choir. You can give them any responsibility also. And you can make an anonymous solidarity found. It could be. It's important that it could be. It would be anonymous, and the, um, only one person knows about this. So they will they feel free in the choirs and they don't feel that they they are special of, about of this this matter. You have to explain to the parents for what is the is the money if for spending in the in the rent of the local to buy part uh, scores to buy uh, uniforms. Uh, you have to explain to be very transparent with, with parents so they would know for what they are spending the money and make facilities uh, to, to pay them. Maybe they don't have to put um, uh, all the money in the at the same time, but uh, maybe one pound or one euro each week or each month. So it's important uh, to, to give them facilities. Also, you can, well, you can, but you do usually you, in some choirs, ever, uh, we make some fundraising activities, but in this case, you, you could do this fundraising activities, uh, especially for this matter. And uh, talk to uh, migrant uh, communities. In migrant communities, sometimes the organization have, a, of the local government sometimes have a grants to help uh, the integration, the social integration. So maybe you can access to, to one of these funds and, and you, can, you can have money for, from the community. So it's, it's, it's good that you be informed about, about that. Now, if you want to, to recruit the migrant migrant population in, in your in your choir uh, well if you want to to do a recruitment strategies you should uh, to make you yourself to to answers to, uh, sorry to, uh, to questions to whom and how um, if you want to reach to the um, to the migrant families uh, you obviously you have to go to the place where they are um, you can use the social media to to know where where they are, but, but also you can you can go and sing in open public spaces in the in the in the part of the city where they usually are. You have to change the, your your mind depending uh, who are you going to. To, to talk to. Uh, if you are going to to talk or you are addressing to the children, uh, you you have to explain 
what happened in a choir. Some people doesn't know what a choir is. So you have to, to spend to spend time to explain what they can find in the in the choir. Maybe um, if you convince a, a, a boy or you have a very well convinced boy in your choir, uh, they should they could do this kind of work for you. So it's easier if they are speaking in the same language with uh, the people who, who is this, the same. Um, some families, uh, you have to explain to the families uh, why the children have to, it's, it's good for them to, to sing. So maybe you can explain them the benefits or singing in a choir. Um, if you convince the, the children of the families easier than you then go to the family to, to speak to them. And you can tell them what is a choir good, why a choir is good for him to learn the, the language, to, to find friends, uh, to be in contact with the community. So, well, all the benefits you can, you can explain them. And it's important you speak or to go properly to the community leader and social worker because it's good to, to ask them uh, to whom is, uh, you, you want to, to speak, uh, which is the easiest way to, to go in, in that community. They know more, better than, than, than us what happened. So it's very good if you, if you can be in contact, in contact to them and very close to them to, well, to, to reach to them. Um, you can, they, they will do it if it's better to do about some flyers or maybe you can use the different languages and some words in, in the language that the people you you want to attract. Um, I think it's easier if, we, if you are in contact uh, with institutions, uh, if you have a inside of your project you have migrant teachers so they will be very close to the to the community and and people uh, migrant singers that you have yet in the in your choir can help you to to arrive to the community also uh, maybe with a with a if you do a, a a concert a small concert in the in the place it could be could be nice to to to, to reach that to reach to them, or to participate in a, any multicultural event that maybe is in the community. So you can take advantage of the events that the, the community organized yet. And also, you you can use your mind. You can combine the the, the, the singing with the food, maybe. And if you make any promotional uh, papers or flyers, uh, you should put the in few words which are the benefits, with what what they are going to find if they are coming to the choir. Now, uh, I think there is some question for. For you, you well. Uh, what do you think? What uh, was the most common welcome mechanism we, we could find? New games, shaking hand and hugs everybody upon arrival, or sharing food and drinks. You have to uh, to answer these questions, and we are looking for what you are thinking. What is the best well, the best thing? Fifty percent has votes. Good. 
Uh, what I cannot see is the what it has answer. Maybe uh, Sonia or Com. So then, actually, um, most people think that it's uh, name games at the beginning, and then the second group thinks that it's shaking hands or hugging everybody upon arrival, and nobody believes that sharing food and drinks was the most common mechanism. Okay. Mm, what I can tell you that uh, the most common mechanism is really the giving food and, and drink. So <laughs> in the old experience, we have a, a study, a study for, for, this, for doing these um, this, um, books. Uh, the most successful was the giving food and, and drink. Uh, I'm going to speak now about the the welcoming mechanism. Let's see, moment. Yes. Uh, the most, the, the, the best we can do is uh, to make, uh, as I have been telling you from the beginning, is to make them very welcome and very safe and very look it after and very they have to 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 feel that we love them uh, it's very important to explain and prepare both sides not only uh, we are going to be very careful with the, the very very nice with people we are inviting to the choir but you have to be sure that your choir is going to accept that so you have it very clear and uh, very explain very well the, the new situation to the choir for make the people you have now uh, by the moment in the choir uh, also want to to do that uh, uh, be very, and be very good and very very nice with the with the people who is arriving and to accept and welcome they by heart by, by heart um maybe um you can the the most the the the, the, the place with the names are, are really very good for for sure uh, if you say hello and and to, every day to you say them how welcome they are of course it's very very good but the experience tell us that if you share some food and some drink with them um and you invite them to bring some typical food and typical things from their culture to the choir, it makes that the people uh, feel better with the, in the choir. The, you create the curiosity for their choir and for them to our choir, for the local choir, sorry. And it goes uh, very, very good in the comprehension of the culture of each other. Um, that is the, the experience, what has telling us and how the, it, it goes. Um, maybe you can ask them to sing a song uh, from their, their, uh, their country to, the, to us, to, to, to the rest of the choir. So they will be, they feel, will, will feel very important to tell us about the, the character, but also uh, you can uh, put in your wall some words uh, in, in the language of the people who is coming in, in, in their own country so they can read the welcome words in, in the, so you have to, to investigate <laughs> about the languages. Um, you can give them uh, short uh, responsibilities to, 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 for them to feel that they are important in the choir. And the most important, I think, is that they don't feel they are different, or so different that they cannot manage. They, they, they could do it, but you, 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 you have to manage with that difference without they notice that it is a bad thing. Uh, now I think uh, we are going to to sing to to have a film to to see a film 
about the welcome mechanism. We start the film just to explain. We'll come back to that. We produced a few films um, uh, with icebreakers of different musical games you can use to um, um, make the group feel more connected. And um, the first one is a name game, so how you can learn the name. Jonathan, Helen. Helen, Peta. Peta, Anna. Anna, as you can see, such games um, also produce um, a moment not only of being together, but also of having fun when you do these kind of things. And then we went from very easy, um, simple games that are not even really songs to more complex songs, but that are easy to learn. And we'll show one example where you can see that in the videos, we are also showing you how to learn the song. So we go through the different steps from learning the melody to learning the movement and then becoming more and more complex. <laughs> So, um, just to say, I'm sorry for the technical difficulties, but you could see as an example of how the films also help you to teach such icebreakers of songs. And I give the word back to Marina. Thank you, Sonia. Um, I'm going to speak now about the legal uses, it's very, it's a, which is a part very important. The conductor and the manager of the choir uh, should know which is the legal situation of the people who you are in your charge. Uh, sometimes they have a. Um, you, sh you should know if they are if they are in legal situation if they are arranging papers, or what happened with the legal si their legal situation. Uh, because uh, sometimes if you have to move from from your town to other town or, for, or from other country, you should know if they need uh, the visa. Sometimes you have to to help them, their parents even, to in the, with a legal paper. Sometimes you have to translate some of the papers. They ask you to translate the papers for them. Uh, if you are working with people, it's not uh, um, no adult people. Uh, of course, even if they are local or migrant, you have you need the authorization of the parent for traveling, for doing even for coming to the rehearsal. About the pictures, you can you can put in the social media and you you can publicate. You have to be very, very careful because sometimes they are in very dangerous situations that they cannot be. Uh, in the in the media, but that uh, this is also common with the local our local children, and sometimes you you need the certificate that you have uh, legal proof that you have not in in sexual matters uh, for for working for uh, with the 
with the children. The fact is, is the resuming every every issues I can I have explained today. You can resume this in if you work uh, with flexibility, with sensitive. Uh, you, if you are empathic with the situation, and if you make it with love, you, for sure you 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 could do it. And it's, now uh, I give the words to my colleague Sonia, who is uh, explaining you more things. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marina. And I think it was a beautiful final word and a nice bridge to um, the next chapter. And I will be rather short about this chapter, but um, you could hear, I think, a lot of words in what Marina said that also mean that the conductor has a different role in such situations. So Marina spoke about things like flexibility, um, sensitivity, um, patience, which are certainly um, all elements that are very important if you're working in this uh, background, probably also very important if you have a regular children and youth choir, but they may be even more important when you are working with um, cultural mix. Um, we asked a lot of conductors in projects and they all said, probably in this specific situation when you are trying to work with migrant and non-migrant singers together, the pure musical skills are not the most important when you want to choose a conductor or are not the most important that you need to use as a conductor. Though, of course, when it comes to concerts, they will be important. What is very important in this context is that, that the conductors work with joy. Um, and they have to um, not only create the, the safe space and, and be able to organize everything that Marina just explained, but um, they have to be good in nonverbal communication and they have to have humor and culturally safe humor, which is maybe important, but mostly also show joy. And sometimes it can be helpful. We have met quite a lot of um, projects where maybe they're the conductor or one of the two conductors working in the project had a migrant background himself or herself, because that makes the singers feel, oh, he or she is one of us, actually. And that can increase the acceptance of a conductor. Now, the second topic that we want to talk about in chapter two is about repertoire. It was the most common question that we got asked in the preparations of this project is how which repertoire should I use if I want to work in this context and how can I find this repertoire? And so we want to get you a bit more active. So we're going to put a question on the chat and please feel free to answer um, in the chat what you think uh, might be the best repertoire if you want to work um, with migrant children in the choir, um, which repertoire might be difficult and maybe also share with us if you have ever had experience yourself, for example, with singers refusing to sing certain repertoire or saying, when I use this kind of repertoire, or when I use this song, I get especially good results and it's very easy to get the group together. And while you put your answers in the chat with um, your opinion or your experience, I will continue talking a little bit. So you will now see this um, question in the chat. Um, so the first thing I would like to say is actually there is no one answer. So what we could see from the projects is we cannot say this is the repertoire you should use if you want to work um, in such a context. Um, we got projects which showed quite different ways of how to deal with the repertoire question. So some people said, I try to use neutral repertoire. So actually neither repertoire from the host country nor repertoire from the countries where the singers come from. Um, but actually, I, I take a repertoire that has nothing to do with them. That could be, um, because somebody also wrote easy repertoire, that could be, for example, African music, even though you have no Africans in your choir. A lot of African songs are very easy to learn, and you can move and sing, and they connect uh, people with each other. Some choirs choose to sing repertoire from the host country. Um, also, and I'll come back to that because it can help the migrant children to improve their language skills of the host country. But some choirs say we want to sing at least one song from every culture that is represented in our choir, which is a beautiful idea and is not always as easy to do as it is to say. So um, um, my colleague Kum will give you some help on how you can find repertoire, but then if it has to be easy, that can be a challenge sometimes. And um, but sometimes it can even be a gesture if you're trying to recruit singers from a certain culture and you say, I want to go to the Turkish 
um, regional center and give a concert, um, it could impress your audience if you can sing a Turkish song um, or if you can sing an Arab song. And so many people were looking for this kind of repertoire. Then one point that can be an issue, but doesn't have to be, that's important to say, is that for some singers with um, a religious background, which can be a Muslim background, but can also be, for example, Jewish singers, or uh, maybe singers from families that don't uh, consider themselves as having a religion, is when you have to sing religious repertoire. And your first instinct might be, I don't have to do religious repertoire, but actually in many of our countries, for example, we sing Christmas concerts. And Christmas repertoire is um, usually also religious repertoire. Um, however, we have found choirs that do Christmas concerts with Muslim singers, and it's not a problem. So we don't want to say it's forbidden. All we want to say is you need the sensitivity that Marina talked about to talk to the parents and talk to the um, people around you to say, is it okay for your children if I do that? Or maybe is it okay if I add a Jewish song and I add a Turkish song to the concert so it becomes a Christmas concert with not only Christian repertoire? Um, and so if you read the chapter in more details, you will find these. There's maybe one more thing. Many people, when we ask them, said, oh, well, pop songs are great because everybody knows pop songs. And then we realized, careful, this is not the right reason for choosing pop songs because actually um, people from Syria or from Afghanistan or from a certain African country may never have heard about Michael Jackson. So maybe they don't know Michael Jackson and they don't know the song you want to sing or Madonna or whatever you choose, um, which doesn't mean that you cannot use pop music. You may use it because it may be easy or it may have a text that the children relate to and that the young people, that's also very important. But don't assume that everybody who is in your choir will know the song. So that's something we learned as well. And the last and maybe most important point, which relates again to the conductor being able to work with joy is whatever repertoire it is, the children and young people have to have fun, they have to enjoy it. Um, that's the main point um, if you want them to stay in the choir. And um, I want to finish my presentation with a little example of a choir that is using um, two approaches, actually. So it's using the repertoire as a language learning tool. And this is a children's choir from Basel in German-speaking Switzerland. And they have a big challenge because they actually have to learn two languages at the same time, um, the young migrants, because they have to learn Swiss German, which is the language in which they communicate with their peers and the people around them. And they have to learn high German. Um, for school as well and for writing. So this choir, they both sing songs from the different countries where the children come from, songs in Swiss German and songs in High German. And they try to also sing songs that relate to the reality of the children. So the song you will hear now um, is a German song and it says we are all children of one earth that theoretically has enough food for everybody. But nevertheless, some children are hungry and some children have more than enough. And then it also says we have children from all over the world in our own town, but do we really make the best out of that? So it's a text that really relates to the reality of the children. And with this, I will finish my presentation. And after the film, you will see my colleague Tom Ferrand Cooper back on this place. So enjoy the Colibri Choir from Switzerland.
I am back. <laughs> Thank you, Sonia. Thank you, Marina. It was a very interesting presentation. I have actually learned a few things or remembered a few things, even though we worked a lot on these handbooks. And uh, we have been discussing about this, uh, all these repertoire issues. And I would like to finish the presentation um, by uh, explaining a few things about some tools we have developed around repertoire. But before, maybe, because since we asked you a question, and the question was, uh, which repertoire do you think works best? Which repertoire might be difficult? And about your personal experience. And we had different answers. Um, some people told us easy repertoire. That's a bit what Sonia said. Music from different countries, even if they're not represented in the choir. Somebody told us that uh, she tried to make German music better known among the migrants in the town, but it did not work so well. So sometimes uh, it's a bit complicated. Sometimes you have to adapt. And also, there is we've seen an uh, interesting project where they try to simplify some of the songs to use the songs as means of, uh, of language acquisition by actually making shorter sentences. Because if you have to learn a melody, uh, where eventually a movement with the others plus songs uh, in a language you don't know so well, it might be complicated. So you do have some projects trying to address these questions of the language because it's a very good tool for language acquisition, of course. But, uh, very nice. And then we had, uh, Sonia wrote a lot of answers to the answers. <laughs> um, yeah. Repertoire from different countries, host of the singers and from other places. And we will come to that because I will talk a bit about the uh, last handbook we have had, we produced. And this is the repertoire guide. So it's about the same size, it's a 30 pages uh, and book with two main parts. Uh, one part is actually a collection of links and information about musical games, songs, and exercises you can use as icebreakers and uh, ways to connect the people in a uh, collective of singers uh, from different origins. So most of these games, of course, are games you can use in a normal choral setting, in a school, in any singing group, but we try to select some that were very efficient and that had been proved to work. Actually, we recorded about 30 of them and you have seen two or three videos about that and you can find directly the link in the, in the PDF. And if you print it, you can scan a QR code to have access to all these videos. And that's a quite a useful tool. These videos are, are, are well used now. So a lot of people are actually watching them. I hope they use the, the games and the icebreakers. Um, and then we also uh, have a second part, and that links to the, the comments we had about the uh, music from the host countries and music from the countries of origin. We try to organize the second part of the handbook in a collection of songs, um, some sample songs from the countries of origin of the main migrants. Let's say we looked at the statistics and said mostly people come from this region and that region, and we try to find a few nice, easy to sing, well-documented songs that we could share. Which means if you have people coming into your choir, you can first start with a present, telling them, look, I have at least one song from your country. Shall we sing it? They might say, oh, yes. Or they might say, oh, actually, I know a better one. My grandmother used to sing that and that. And you just can start this relation. And we think it's a, and we have been told, and we have seen that it's quite a good tool. So I would invite you to check out the, the handbook on that. So you can use, of course, the SingMean repertoire guide. And I really invite you to download it on singmean.eu. But you can also use a very nice tool. I don't know if you know this tool. It's the Musicanet database. I will explain it. And while I explain what it is, I will just put a short uh, questionnaire for you. And if you can just tell us if you have already heard about the MusicaNet, uh, Musica database, uh, or if you have heard about it and never used it, and so on. It would be very interesting for us. In a few words, MusicaNet uh, database um, has been created quite a few years ago. Sonia, it's about many years ago. Yeah, many years ago. <laughs> uh, and it's a very nice initiative. It's a non-profit organization, and they have collected about 200,000 choral and collective singing uh, uh, pieces of repertoire in all styles. And they are all entered in the database with a lot of uh, 
um, uh, criteriums that you can search. And I will show you in a few minutes how it can work. So you can say, for example, I want to have a piece for soprano and alto uh, sung in uh, Japanese uh, for a choir of this level, blah, blah. You can enter the, the it's just like a search engine, a Google for uh, choral music. It's a very, very nice tool. I don't know. Three people answered. Three people answered. So I don't know if the other one wants to answer, but we can also talk about it in the chat. So maybe you can publish the results. Yeah. Oh, I have not answered, but I know that. So we have quite a mix. Uh, one has not heard about it. Some people don't use it regularly, and somebody uses it uses it regularly. Okay. I will come back to the presentation to show you uh, how it works. It's actually free to access for everybody. You have access to the first 50 answers of any query, which most of the time is sufficient. But if you become a member of a certain number of organizations, you have access to an unlimited number of uh, answers. I would dare make some advertisement. If you become a member of the European Choir Association, you have access to Musica International. So I would really invite you to join the network, but that's for another day. Um, MusicaNet, they were, of course, of course, partner of this project and they did a wonderful work. First of all, they referenced all the songs that we had in the repertoire book by uh, indexing them with the CMIN keyword, which means if you type in the repertoire, in the, sorry, in the database CMIN, you will have access to the full list. Then, with the help of the partners, they have also enriched the, the database with pronunciation files, with translations, with scores, some videos. So try really to give you a lot of tools that help you use these songs, like they do for other songs, but they put specific work on this uh, set of, uh, of music. I can show you, I won't uh, actually launch the website because it's a bit complicated to share the screen. This is a screenshot of what you can see. This is the basic search uh, 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 field. So, and then you can type a keyword like CMIN, and you have access to a certain number of answers. So there, I would have had 78 answers in this case. And there, this is the basic uh, presentation of your results that you can search again and filter. And then you have access to the, to a, I took a, just a random song in the collection. And, and there you have an indication, there is no publisher, it is not uh, published. Uh, you have one page, for the full score, you can actually see, I haven't uh, extracted it here, an extract of the score or sometimes the full score, if it's a traditional, which is the case there. You see it says in the SATB for voices and so on. So you have a lot of information. You may have some translation, the text, an explanation, pronunciation files. That means somebody actually uh, speaking the, the words. It helps you have the right pronunciation um, in, the, in the specific language. And that's a very useful tool. So in one word, I would really invite you to go and check musicanet.org. Back the uh, website there, you can see it. Uh, it's really worth it. And with that, we have been through what we wanted to share with you. Um, and I don't know if you have other questions and things we can discuss. It would be yeah. very interesting. So Sonia, have you seen any so questions? There was a practical question. Yes. I'll try to make it. Public. I'm not sure if I can hear this question. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make this place. And then you have to sure select this. Let's see if it works. Um, I choose from there. Yeah, yeah publish. So, um, so yeah, do you want to come with us? And yes. Do it together. <laughs> so I, I have also already answered it in the chat, but maybe not everybody can read the chat at the same time. So what we will do to start with is with everybody who was um, attending this um, webinar, we can send you a message and in the message we can put the URL on how to find the recording. Some people missed the beginning, so they were asking how, how can they watch it and also how can they watch the other presentations. And the second easy answer is you can go on www.singmein.eu yes, we'll and we will everything. publish everything there. Also everything that we have mentioned, so you can download the handbooks there, you can um, also, um, uh, find the links to the uh, icebreakers we mentioned. Um, and you also will find actually a, 
a resource page with all kinds of background literature that might also be interesting for you. Thank okay. you. Any other questions from one of the participants? If not, we have overstretched your time, maybe also a little bit. Um, also feel free to write to us if you have any questions. You will also find um, the link, I think, on Sing Me In, yes. how to reach us. So you can also send us a link. So maybe let's put Marina back on for a second to um, say goodbye. Marina, can you switch on your camera and microphone for a second so we can see you? Yes, wonderful. <laughs> yes. Nice. It's uh, nice because we're sitting quite far apart from each other. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. so, so Marina is uh, um, actually, I think, talking from Tenerife. Yes. So, um, um, but as you can see, modern technology makes it possible for us to do a webinar. Together. So thank you very much to Marina. Thank you very much to- Thank you. Well, thank you, Sonia. Um, bye-bye. Thank you for watching and following us. Bye.